So you want to know what it's like to work from home. You may be thinking, I'm going to make a ton of money working from home in my pajamas. I can't wait. You know, it was snowing out and I was just like, okay, I really am lucky to be working from home. I can wear my pajamas. I wanted to make a video about what it really is like working from home. So here's a day in the life working from home as a psych NP. Um, and I wanted to share that with you. So uh, let's jump into it. day out there. Can you confirm your name and date of birth? Tell me a little bit more. When did these symptoms start? Okay, I'm gonna have to wrap things up pretty quickly here and let's go over a few more details. Am I wearing my pajamas? Why yes. Yes, I am wearing my pajamas. <laughs> the first thing I do is I check my schedule. That's really important. Maybe you would say like I'm available between the hours of eight and five, or um, you can sometimes work early in the morning or late in the evening or whatever. People can jump in and say, you know, a patient or client or whatever you're gonna call it. Maybe they can self schedule or maybe not, but that's typically what you're gonna see is that people can jump in and self schedule. That is what your schedule will look like. And that can change very, very quickly. You definitely want to get in and look at what is going on with your schedule because it can change very fast. So I've gone to bed and had no one on my schedule and got up the next day and had 10, 12 patients on the schedule. I've had the opposite true too, where I've had a bunch of patients and then they've all canceled or whatever. But that happened when I worked in the office as well. You know, if it snowed, a bunch of people would cancel. And there's never any kind of perfect schedule either. So you always have to get up and look and see what's happening with that schedule first thing in the morning. And I'm a planner, so I'm going to get up and I'm going to see what's going on with my day, what changes have happened. And if I see that it's really slammed around lunch, I might get up and, you know, make my lunch. I know that I'm going to be really busy around that time. So I'll get up check my schedule, um, get my day going, start my breakfast, do my yoga, whatever, my coffee, all that kind of stuff. So just get everything ready to go. I've got last minute prep items. So I keep things right around my desk, lipstick, earrings, so that I'm ready very, very quickly. Um, but I, I keep my workstation like ready to go. I also have things in case there are problems. I keep um, headphones, microphones, backup materials, just lighting because it gets really dark, um, you know, in the winter time. So extra lighting because my camera for um, seeing clients will not pick me up very well if it starts getting too dark out. So I keep extra lights and just all kinds of things so that in case I have any problems. So I've got everything ready to go. And then, you know, depending upon what company you're working for, there's going to be different tools, but essentially it's going to be a video visit and an EMR system of some kind. And then your calendar system um, that you're going to click in to see your patients. You're going to be documenting your note and you're going to do your video visit just like you normally would. You're going to do your MSE um, and then do your assessment and plan just like you normally would for any other client. Once you're done with your visits, you're going to go back and finish your notes. Um, do your prescribing, and then you have to do all of your administrative tasks as far as checking labs, answering emails for patients as well as staff, and just all of those extra things. Um, and that does take time. Um, you know, that's the reality of working as a nurse practitioner is it's not just seeing a patient and then you're done. There's all kinds of other, you know, reading notes from other people and all that administrative stuff on the back end that, that takes time. So, you know, what's the difference between working in an office and working from home? Um, in real life, clients would get lost and wouldn't show up or they just wouldn't show up for a visit. Um, the same thing happens when I see them virtually. Sometimes they just don't show up. Sometimes they cancel at the last, I mean the last possible minute um, or they just don't show up at all. Sometimes they have tech problems and they can't click in and you're 15 minutes into a 30 minute visit and they still can't click in and they still can't figure it out and they're on there and they're fiddling with, I can't hear you and you're blurred. Blah, blah, blah. and they can't 
figure it out and they're struggling and or you're having tech problems or is it your tech problem or is it their tech problem and you know um, and that's a reality of working from home if you are not someone who's very tech savvy uh, if you struggle with a computer on a good day this might not be a great option for you um, you're gonna find this extremely frustrating uh, working in a in-person environment where you have tech support that's going to be really a big benefit uh, something to consider you're going to want to pull your hair out on a daily basis because you're not only your own tech support your patient's tech support too and you know not everybody is as savvy as you know so that's a daily occurrence. Um, you know, in real life, your schedule is never perfect. When I worked in an office, um, sometimes I was like slammed busy, and then sometimes I was crickets slow. I mean, there were days where I would have three patients on my schedule, and then one was in the morning, one was in noon, and one was at the evening, and so I'm sitting there like, I'm twiddling my thumbs all day long waiting to see these patients, and that's so frustrating. That exact same thing can happen just at home and yeah it's a little bit nice that you're home and you're not there but you're still kind of chained to you can't do a lot of other things you can't really jump into you can't start cleaning and being all sweaty you can't run errands you can't do a lot of things so you know it's not like you have a lot of freedoms we'll kind of jump back on that topic again later um, but you know virtually you have the same issues that you know yeah you can do some things but probably still frustrating in the same way that it is when you're working in a you know actual office so um, and you know the reality of as a nurse practitioner you only get paid when you see patients when you are working uh, salaried and you're working in a clinic or in a hospital or something like that um, you are rounding on patients and you get paid regardless of what's happening sometimes that's to your detriment and you get dumped on and you see a bazillion patients and you're overwhelmed the converse can be true when you are working um, and you're only getting paid for the patients that you see. So whether you're working in an office or whether you're working from home, um, when you're not busy, you only get reimbursed for the patients that you're seeing and that's the reality of being a nurse practitioner. So if you're not busy and you don't have a lot of patients on your schedule, you're not gonna get a lot of money and that's just how that works. So that's something that you need to be thinking about and you know, payment and, and salary and everything as a nurse practitioner is extremely different. And you know, if that's something that you're interested in, um, you know, the questions you need to be asking for salary and how do nurse practitioners get paid, um, that's a very, very different and, and that's a topic I'd be happy to jump into as well and discuss. So if you wanna know more about that, let me know in the comments and I can make a video that that really breaks down you know how to get paid and what questions you need to ask when you're in an interview and that kind of thing so let me know in the comments about that um, but yeah you don't make money when you don't see clients so if you have two on your schedule that's all you're gonna get paid for the day you don't get paid hourly if you're just sitting there so um, I think some co some companies aren't quite as transparent about that but I kind of digress there but once you are done seeing all of your patients you're done with all of your administrative work um, you know, you've you've sent off your prescriptions, you've reviewed all the labs, you've answered all the questions of or everything. You know, sometimes there's errors. Sometimes, you know, it takes longer. And I think that's the reality of being a nurse practitioner too. Um, but also an RN and also a whatever kind of job, you know, sometimes everything goes wrong and you're trying to get done and you're trying to get home and, you know, pick up kids from daycare and get to dinner started or whatever. That can be true whether you're working virtually or whether you're working in a standing office or whatever, you are just trying to get things done and nothing is going right and you're having a terrible day and that happens no matter what your job is. So that's just the reality of it, you know. Um, and I think some people have the idea that you can work from home and not need daycare. And that's a myth I just want to dispel right away. I mean, if you really think about it, you know, you can't concentrate if your kids are saying mommy, mommy, or daddy, daddy, or whatever, you know, but they're in your face. Um, one, it's not professional. I mean, would you want to be a patient who is talking and, and you've got a child there who's talking? I mean, that's not at all professional. Two, it's a HIPAA violation. There's no way you could have 
children in the room particularly with psychiatric nurse practitioners, and people are talking about their most private intimate details, bipolar, schizophrenia, all of these things that they are talking to us about, um, you know, their abuse and all of these things, you know, absolutely not what you want to subject your children to the things that we hear. So um, it's just wildly inappropriate um, both ways. But also you can't concentrate as a, uh, provider, you have to prescribe these medications, you need to be able to concentrate, you need to be able to be focused and present. Even having small kids at home and having like a babysitter or something in the same general area, I would not recommend it. So you need to be away from your family, all of your family. I mean, just think about spouses and how they don't want to hear it either um, and shouldn't for HIPAA reasons. You know, so is it possible to not have daycare? I think it is if you have old enough children. Uh, just the caveat of, you know, my spouse doesn't want to hear it. It's a HIPAA violation. So you definitely need to have a private, quiet location so that you can have private HIPAA compliant discussions with your clients or patients or whomever. Uh, just keep that in mind. That's a really important aspect of your work. So if you have some place that you can go and have those conversations and then, you know, run up and uh, check on your older children, I think that's totally appropriate. Um, but you do need some place that you can get away from other people. So if you have a spouse who's working from home, um, you know, they're going to be in meetings and that's the situation I find myself in. I have a spouse who is uh, also has a home office and he's talking in meetings. I'm talking in meetings. We need some distance and separation from each other. Um, so it is possible. It's just, you know, think about the age of your child. And so there's a lot of factors to consider there when you're thinking about home office and what's appropriate. Um, just, you know, but it, it is really fantastic if you can make that work. So just something to throw in there. Um, and that kind of brings me back to, you know, you're trying to get home and get your kids from daycare. The same is true of, you know, if you're a home office and you have someone watching your children, um, the same is true. You know, you're trying to get away and get things wrapped up and get done. Um, the same can be true when you're working in a home office, but at least you can relieve a babysitter and then finish up, you know, prescribing or whatever you need to do. So just things to consider from a home office. It isn't perfect. It is still, um, the same thing. It's just, you don't have a commute time. So that's a definite pro. Uh, you don't have to get out in the snow. Uh, so there's definitely some pros when you consider working in a home office, um, with COVID and everything. It is, it has been a huge asset and benefit for me. Um, I do have a lot of flexibility with my scheduling. However, I've been offered positions working in a facility where I was offered that same flexibility and scheduling as well. So there's a lot to consider when it comes to working virtually. You know, you do make pretty good money working from home. And if you wanna know more about like salary comparisons and why did I go back to get my psych NP when I was already a DNP, FNP, let me know. Um, you know, I can make videos about those kinds of things. So just leave me a comment down below. I'd be happy to make more videos. If you're somebody who struggles with technology, that's something you might wanna consider. Um, when it comes to working in your pajamas, I actually don't, typically wear pajama bottoms just because every once in a while I might have to stand up, grab a text or a book or something like that. Typically you could only see this part of me anyway, but I try not to wear anything quite so outlandish for bottoms just in case I would have to stand up. So I try to wear at least like plain black or plain, you know, a solid color or something like that. So it's not so obvious that I'm wearing pajama bottoms just in case. Um, maybe something drops on the floor and I stand up and, you know, I, I you need to be professional. Um, these people are paying to see you as a professional, so you should look like one. Um, you know, you can save on lunches because you're not going out to eat. Well, you could pack your lunch and bring that with you. So, you know, when it comes to pros and cons, I think it really comes down to commute time and, and not having to get out in the snow. Um, and there is some convenience there, but um, there's a lot to be considered. So, um, you definitely designated office space and things like that. So just things to think about, but 
when I considered all the pros and cons, it has definitely worked out well for me and I really, really enjoy it. So I don't mean to discourage you. I, I absolutely love working from home and it has been a fantastic thing for me. I love being a psychiatric nurse practitioner. I love being a family nurse practitioner. I love working in the office and so, you know, there's a lot of pros. I hope this has been really helpful for you. I hope you consider checking out um, my website, NP Objective. I hope if you are working on getting your psychiatric nurse practitioner that you would consider um, my courses that help you study for your boards. And I will link all of that below. Come check out my website. And if there's anything that you have questions about, I wanna help NPs and I think we are excellent at what we do. I want to help us all succeed. So thanks so much for checking out this video. I will link some more up here and I will check you out later. Bye-bye.